Are you a fan of automobile design? If yes, you've probably spent considerable time wondering how tires are made. Although synthetic rubber is made from polymers found in crude oil, natural rubber is gotten from the bark of a tree called Hevia brasiliensis. In the beginning, this rubber is extracted as a liquid, but after being processed by rubber manufacturing companies, most of the moisture content is extracted and the newly formed sheet-like rubber is sent off to tire manufacturing companies who demand it. Another major ingredient in tire production is carbon black, a smooth black powder obtained when natural gas is burnt without a sufficient supply of oxygen. Tire manufacturers use so much carbon black that they always have huge silos on company grounds to store it in large amounts. Other ingredients used include sulfur and other chemical additives. Once all the desired ingredients are assembled at the factory, the next step of production is mixing them all together under high heat and pressure. Huge and powerful blenders are used for this process, and the result is a black rubber goo, which has some of the qualities of tires, including elasticity and, in some cases, the right amount of friction. This pretty elastic goo is kneaded and monitored several times to ensure that the mixture is consistent across its lengths. As it is rolled out into sheets, this rubber goo is deployed on a giant convener, where it is kept for the next stage of production. This rubber mixture is mainly used for the body of the tire. Meanwhile, another machine produces rubber fabrics, which will be used to cover the rubber goo since they are not sturdy on their own to provide the balance that tires are known to have. These rubber fabrics are produced using a machine called the calendar. First, these calendars are supplied with fabric, and then rubber fibers from two sets of rollers are woven into the fibers of this fabric, thus producing the rubber fabric. Depending on the kind of calendar, the fabric used at the beginning of this process can be of different types. It could be made of polyester fibers or steel rods. However, polyester is more commonly used. These rubberized fabrics are used to construct the part of the tire known as the plies. Up next is another rubber combination used to produce tire threads. The threads are produced using three different rubber mixtures, which are put into a machine called the extruder. This machine puts the rubber mix through another round of heating and mixing before forcing the mixture through an opening called the die. After this process, all three rubber mixtures become one. This thread mixture is then flattened, cut into strips of equal lengths, and kept aside until it is time to assemble all the tire compartments. Next, the beads of the tire are formed. The beads are formed from steel wires, which makes them strong enough to carry out their function of keeping the whole tire in place. To make the beads, several steel wires uncoil at once, and another machine arranges them parallel to each other. Next, the arranged metal wires are encased in rubber before they are taken to another machine which shapes them into hoops. About four layers of hooped beads are stacked on each other, and another machine compresses them until they form one layer thick enough to be assembled with the rest of the tire compartments. Next, it is time to assemble all the tire parts, and the machine used for this process is called the tire assembler, or simply, the tire building machine. This machine contains a collapsible rotating drum where all these compartments are arranged. First, a layer of rubber fabric is arranged around this rotating drum, and then two rubber beads are arranged on either side before another layer of ply is laid over the beads. Another machine called a server applies thin rubber strips to both sides of the drum, which are covered with body ply, and this forms the sidewalls of the tire. Another roller curves the ends of the sidewall, and this forms the skeleton of the tire. The other drum is then deflated to allow the so-called skeleton to be easily removed. On another rotating drum, the outer layer of the tire is assembled. First, a wide rubber strip embedded with steel cords is arranged around the drum, and another machine wraps several thinner rubber strips around it. These thin rubber strips are wound with so much pressure that they look like graduation lines on the bigger rubber originally wrapped around the drum. The final layer applied to this arrangement comprises the thread strips that were cut beforehand. After all three layers have been assembled, it's now time to join the outer layer and the tire skeleton together. 
Next, a machine called the collector places the skeleton on another rotating drum in the outer layer around it. As the drum rotates, another roller presses the edge of the thread rubber onto the sidewalls of the inner layer, and when that's done, the result is known as a green tire. The green tire, which is bare and without any markings, is sent into a machine called the tire mold, where it undergoes the curing process. This machine is shaped like a giant clamshell, and once it opens, it exposes a bladder on which the tire is placed. The bladder fills the tire with steam and expands it before the clamshell closes, thus compressing the tire and conferring the thread patterns on the outer layer of the tire. The newly formed tire is mechanically lifted out of the bladder after the curing process. Each tire is allowed to cool and then tested. The technicians test for flaws, such as holes in the rubber of every layer of the tire. Next, the tire is placed on a test wheel where it's inflated, spun, and monitored through sensors measuring the balance of the tire and checking whether it runs in a straight line. Once the test is complete, each tire is moved to a warehouse for distribution.